Hey everybody, welcome back to Art by Galen. I'm Galen Eilenfeld, and today I would like to go over with you my methods for painting detailed wooden textures. I've decided to call these art workouts because I think it's very similar to when you're doing any other kind of workout or practice. And like those other things, if we don't put in the practice with our artwork, we can't really expect to get the results that we hope for. My goal with these videos is to give you simple exercises that you can do to improve upon your painting and drawing skill sets. And by doing these little exercises, our work will improve, our understanding of shape, texture, lighting, and dimension will all get better. And over the course of time, after we've done lots of these with different textures, different lighting scenarios, and different other variables, our work will continue to grow immensely. Today we're going to start with the first of three different wood textures, beginning with basic tree bark. In upcoming videos, I'm going to cover the other two that you can see on your screen here. And I've also got some templates that you can download that have basic outlines of these shapes, as well as a simple rendering of shading. If you'd like to download these templates, please feel free to join my Discord server, which is linked in the description below. In that server, there's a channel called Assets where you'll be able to download these. If you're wondering why these textures have been applied to these random shapes, I've got a cylinder, a sphere, and a cube. The reason for doing this is if you teach yourself or train yourself to apply these textures to random shapes that aren't too complex, it allows you to focus your study on the texture itself, but it'll also enable you in the future to be able to apply that texture to whatever shape you're working with. Okay, so First of all, I've got the basic shading here already kind of laid out. That way I don't have to think too much about lighting. I changed the color of them just to give myself a base to start with. So what I've done here is I've taken a larger brush and I've just very quickly and crudely blocked in bigger areas that will be, you know, the larger sections of tree bark. And then up on the top I'm doing uh, just rough rings that will simulate the uh, the rings inside of a tree when you like when you cut it open. Um, I didn't have a reference for that, but I've, I've drawn enough of it to where it wasn't a problem for me. But if it's something that you're not comfortable with, definitely find a reference for it. And here what I'm doing is I'm going through with a finer brush and, and sharpening up the outlines of those shapes that we blocked in with a bigger brush earlier. Uh, as I do this, I'm adding little things like you know, cracks and, uh, you know, rough edges. Basically, you don't want it to be too machined looking. Even even doing it on a square shape like this, uh, which if you're wondering, applying these textures to various shapes, even shapes that they don't generally belong to, will teach you a little bit more about how to render them whenever you're working on something of your own in the future. Because not everything is going to be a perfect shape of one type or the other, and learning how to apply these to all these different shapes is a great exercise. And here we're continuing on outlining these uh, bigger bark pieces. Now we're going over the back area, adding some of the bark kind of coming up from behind. And now I'm taking that same brush, maybe a little bit larger, and I'm coming in and adding some very simple highlights to the bark. I want to leave the edges pretty dark because I want them to look like they're deep down. The idea here is just to add some subtle dimension to all of these pieces. An important thing to keep in mind is like, even though they're all separate, you know, appearing pieces of bark on the tree, they all are part of a whole. Like, they have to be able to be recognized as a singular thing and instead of just individual sort of scales, I guess. And now what I'm doing here, I'm taking a smaller brush and an even brighter highlight, and I'm kind of scribbling little shapes uh, to add to that bark texture. You don't want it to be smooth blends because then it'll look too um, airbrushed or computer generated. You want it to look rough. And honestly, I feel like with these types of illustrations, they look a lot better when you can actually see some of the paint strokes in the image. And you can see here, I'm just doing it very roughly. I do go back and smooth a few things out later on, but the majority of this roughness, this, this harsh texture of the bark will stay there. Thank you. 
I did go back and darken up some of the lines, but uh, once I've got the bark looking somewhat where I want it to be, I take a larger brush and I make a new layer and I set that to linear dodge. And um, what that allows me to do is I can brush over a very dark color, but it will still give me like a real subtle highlight. And you can see I've kind of gone over some of the edges with it to sort of enhance the lighting. And now we're going through and blending out portions of the bark. And uh, you know, we're taking some time and going to add a little bit of detail into the rings up in the cut section on top. I'm going to pull some of those lighter colors around into the darker area and pull some of the darker colors around into the lighter area. You want to have kind of a smooth transition both directions um, and again if you're if you're not familiar with how this stuff is definitely get a reference like just look up a tree stump or something like that and um, you, know, you can see here I've taken a very small brush and I'm actually going in with uh, tiny little rings to kind of enhance that wood texture and it's already starting to come to life here but uh, I, I like in my reference pictures, I've got some moss, so we're gonna adjust the lighting a little bit, brighten this piece up. And so I sample that color and we're gonna start just kind of really roughly blocking in some mossy areas to put here. And then once we've got them all blocked in, we will work on the kind of a similar method as to what we did the bark with. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the basic highlights and shadows and then start applying some of that texture to it mainly focusing on not making it look too airbrushed. You want a nice, uh, like a chalk brush might work really well if you're painting digitally, um, something sort of rough. You can see now it's starting to really come to life now that we've got the, the shadows and the highlights in here. Um, and with this being a cube, you know, you've got to keep in mind that, you know, each plane is going to have a different amount of light hitting it depending on your lighting setup that you have for it. Um, and it's just something you want to be mindful of whenever you're working on this. Something that I love doing is adding uh, like rim lighting or secondary lighting to images. And uh, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of hitting that left side with a real harsh light. Uh, but the effectiveness of this isn't so much that it's a bright color or anything like that. That is part of it, but it, it allows me to bring attention to all the little detail in the pieces of bark and in the, uh, the moss that's growing on the tree as well. And I'm doing it with a color that complements the rest of the image as well. Like it doesn't, it doesn't um, blend in with it where it's not noticeable. If you've been doing lots of really warm and you know, almost like sunlight coming from the top. So I take some yellows and I do similar highlights coming from that top right edge on the bark on the right side. I really hope that you've enjoyed this art workout slash tutorial. Uh, I'd love to see your application of this if you choose to do it on one of the other shapes or even a different shape of your own. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to invite you to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you're not, and Check that description down below, join my Discord, and share your work with us. Share your work with myself and my community that we have there. It's very supportive, it's very open, there's artists of all levels that participate there. And uh, hopefully we can all grow together. And so, until next time, keep creating, and take care.